internet has declared it. 10-day Tony is not allowed to celebrate the Miami Heat's victory today. Good. He is not allowed to be a Miami fan today because he wanted them to lose I mean, purposely on, against the Chicago Bulls and get one of those Wemba Miyama balls. Uh, he's not alone. I have declared that Mike Ryan can also not root for the Heat moving forward. That's it. He's kicked off. Kicked off the float. If I can speak for myself for a second, yeah. we were talking on Friday, hey, should the Heat maybe not play all their best players and maybe sit this one out, maybe not get the 8 seed to play this buzzsaw Bucks team? Yes, that's what I was saying. Was I right? I also believe I was right. All of a sudden, you lose Tyler Hero four to six weeks, a hand injury on a shooting hand. You never know how you can recover from that. You might get a botched surgery. Who knows? I'm not saying that that's going to happen. A botched surgery? Just, what? Before. You escalated to a botched surgery? Surgeries always go well. He's I never going to say that he's wrong. They they just learn that well. about Tony. He will take this until the end of the earth and take it Dan, as am far I wrong? as he should they have Should they have gone through this and done Is this? Is he wrong? Is there going to be a botched surgery, Dan? Is he wrong? A botched surgery, maybe not. But I'm talking about should they have not played in this, in this playoffs – Sat, tried to get a ping pong ball, trying to get a, a franchise changing player like that. I'm just putting my GM hat on, and that's what I think I would do. Uh, yeah, you're wrong. Heat and five, baby. Oh, please. Yes, uh, this guy, you go. Atta boy. Here's a propaganda machine. Amin El Hassan is in here with us today. We are grateful for him on this day of celebration as we uh, officially kick off our new studios. Jessica is back as well. Jessica has been getting a torrent of uh, people who say she's not allowed to go anywhere uh, in, in a way that's really strange. So welcome back, Jessica. I just want to shout out to the fans. I, I love the fans. Saying, um, Jessica, she's she's never on the show, but then when I'm on the show, saying Jessica's yeah. on the show too much, and we we hate when she speaks. So mm -hmm. shout out to the fans, love you guys. I mean, what are your thoughts? Because I happen, uh, this is not the day for it, right? All of the breaks went Miami's way, except the one in Tyler Hero's hand, and they well, that went Miami's way too, technically. On Tyler's uh, way, um, I don't think that break went their way. I think that break. Uh, is really bad for them. But the bigger break went their way. I mean, the no, bigger break with what being one game. No, uh, that's, the biggest break is that Tyler Hero being out uh, dooms them even more than they were already doomed. Don't, don't worry, guys. Uh, we got to turn a means microphone on uh, in this fancy new studio. No matter how fancy the microphones are, if a means isn't turned on, we can't hear any of his illuminating insights. Kind of wish I had a button over here of my own. That's what, to turn yourself on? Yeah, you know, right. I was yeah. told it was see our guest. Mm. Huh. Hmm. You deserve a button. You I do. do. Yeah. I thought I'd earn the button. You're, you, Stugatz is yearning for the and Stugatz. I'm just yearning for a button. Just something so I could turn on, turn on. A call button. Because I'm yearning for illuminating basketball thoughts. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. We all yearn. We Why all, is it mean here? Because it, it's opening night. Uh I'm you, why are there balloons here, Billy? Why do I have a top They're hat? They're very disruptive, these <laughs> balloons. They keep getting in the way. Why do you have a top hat? Yeah. Because it's opening night. We got tuxedo <sighs> shirts and top hats, but yeah. that's for like the TV version of I'm this. yearning for illuminating basketball thoughts. <laughs> we all yearn. It's a human condition. What was the question again? The Miami Heat. <laughs> Good question. Tyler Hero's injury. Uh huh. What Tony is saying is they would have been better off not making the playoffs. They would have been better off having even a microscopic chance at Wembenyama than playing these games that ultimately are going to give us a little more season, but they have next to zero chance of actually emerging from uh, this playoff run in general uh, later, if not now, because maybe they can do something against Milwaukee if Antetokounmpo is out for the entire series, but they need a slew of injuries but, to important players. But, in order to advance all the way to the finals where they will also get slaughtered. Well, four to six weeks, that means he'll be back by the finals, right? That's, so that's, exactly. That's, that's a go. glass half full. Uh, I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, no, what are you talking about? Like, the, the reality is that the Wembenyama sweepstakes, the ping pong balls are so ridiculously heavily loaded towards the, the worst teams. They would have been... Basically, the best team in the in the uh, in the lottery, and that would have given them a a point five percent chance. You're saying there's a chance, though. There's a oh, five percent chance. Is it, like, is it a is there more of a point five percent chance of them advancing in the playoffs? No, I think there's a zero percent chance of them advancing in the playoffs. What does advancing mean to you? Winning this series. I don't know if it's zero percent. Giannis looked like he was in a lot of pain, man. Come on. 
He looked like he was in a lot of the pain. Guy, the guy destroyed his leg and then won four straight and made you go yeah, to the, Milwaukee. The last time we saw him injured, he did win the championship. But I, I'm not a doctor. I don't know whether Giannis is going to be healthy. Backs are pretty important in that sport. <laughs> a- absolutely. But, you know, game one is so incredibly important in terms of setting the tone for the series. Uh, you got one on the road. You got the split. So, essentially, you got all you needed. And then here's Stugatz the thing. was very excited about You got it. a house money game, game two. I mean, Stugatz this is. said uh, that all of the, mm-hmm. half the games, the series has already started. It's a record. It's the biggest, I'm telling you, it's the best opening weekend in NBA playoff history. Uh... Now, you had eight game ones and four of the series have started already. I mean, that's a record. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> Road teams winning everywhere. The, I mean, well, you know, those first couple of games on Saturday were a little rough. But, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. The best-case scenario for a road team, obviously, is to leave the first two games 2-0. That's wild, right? The next best thing is to leave 1-1, but you won game one. Because all the pressure now is on Milwaukee. They've got to figure out what they're going to do if their star player can't go. Bud is still up to Bud, drink, bud Tricks when you talk about he had a lineup out there with Ingles, Matthews and Crowder all out there at the same time on the floor, which was insane to me. They kept playing the drop coverage against Bam, and Bam punished them for it. Jimmy punished them for it. This is a classic Bud here. He, he doesn't adjust. He does the same thing he did all regular season long, and it's not going to work. I'm not saying that the Heat are going to win this. I'm not saying they're going to win this, but I'm saying you already started off to a great start here. And here's the thing, Tony, the last thing to keep in mind. If they beat Milwaukee, guess who's on the other side of that? Who? Either the Knicks or the Cavs. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden it's like, okay, now I feel a lot more comfortable about that route. Make it to the ECF. Mm Mm-hmm. Please. What does that stand for? What has sports become, by the way, that we don't want to play games anymore because people get hurt? Oh, let's not play in the playoffs. Let's, let's not make it to the playoffs just in case Tyler Hero breaks But it wasn't about him getting it said hurt. let's lose so we have a no. 0.05% uh-huh. chance That's of it. making it and getting of the making, number one of pick. Getting, of getting one of the best generational five we've ever seen. The cowardice is the cowardice unbelievable behind there, these people. Please. How could you not want to compete in the playoffs? How could you not want to go to the playoffs? They win game one, and you're still defending a take of, oh, we shouldn't have been to the playoffs? That's completely insane. You guys Don't. are spoiled, oh. honestly. <laughs> like You're spoiled that your team makes it every year to the playoffs. That so You're like, you know exactly. what? I just want to sit it out this year. Tony, I don't want to go to the Tony, playoffs. What, I don't what want a chance. You Man. constitutes, all right, this was a successful playoff run. Is winning one game against the Bucks no, I'm considered not, a successful I'm, play? What if they no, beat the Bucks? That wasn't my question. If my they question beat the Bucks, I'd be surprised. I'd be very, very not surprised. Not surprised. Giving them a 0% What's chance acceptable for you? Winning, winning that first season. That first Seri- series. That Who first cares series. what Tony thinks, though? So they're in a great spot to win that series. They won game one away. on the road. I Put mean. it on the poll, Juju, at Lebitard Show. Who cares what Tony thinks, yes or no? I know, Dan, you care about this. When that ball got kicked out of the corner and then all of a sudden you saw that left hand go up, English. <laughs> I do pronounce his name wrong all the time because it's Spanish for English, and I don't pronounce it Ingles. I just pronounce it Joe Ingles. In fairness to Tony, we are all lashing out at him because Mike Ryan just isn't here right now. Yeah. But He'll when be, he is here, he will be the target. He'll be here in uh, a moment. I did want to bring up a couple of things, though, uh, related to this heat game because Miami shot better than it has all season in a game. Shot 60% from three, shot 60% from the field. That's more points than the Heat have ever scored in a playoff game. The Bucks, meanwhile, a very good shooting team, shot 24% from three. And for a while there, it was the worst shooting performance that they have had all season. But I wanted to ask you, Amin, a couple of different things. Because I think what Tony does is what a lot of sports fans do, is they'd rather put on, as he said, their GM hat than watch playoff games. They'd rather just make the next transaction and love that Windhorst is saying Damian Lillard might be available <laughs> to the Heat uh, this offseason. Oh God, another one of these offseasons. But the, the <laughs> other question I wanted to ask you, I mean, is uh, I know people don't like, a lot of people do not like Reggie Miller as an announcer. Right. But in what world does he come by saying that the Miami Heat losing Tyler Hero is more important than the Bucks losing Giannis? In in Reggie's defense. Oh, my God. There's Reg- no defense. There is. Let my boy cook. There is. Let my boy cook. There is. Let my boy cook. What Reggie was referring to was the idea that uh, Tyler is out for the series, whereas Giannis is day-to-day. 
That's what he was referring to. He wasn't referring to it just in general. Giannis diminished for that team is vastly more important than Tyler anything. Giannis as a lesser player, Giannis, I don't think it's a coincidence Giannis left the game and all of a sudden they couldn't shoot. You're saying Giannis at 50% is more detrimental to the Bucs than Tyler Hero not being there at all? I I think I agree with you. I I disagree with that (laughs) in the sense that this, the Heat struggle to score. I mean, yesterday they scored and they shot well, but overall this season, Tashe, you'll back me up on this, they've struggled to score points in general and specifically from beyond the three-point line. And they don't really have a lot of play creation outside of Jimmy Butler and Bam from time to time. So while Tyler Hero is nowhere near the caliber of Giannis Antetokounmpo, what Tyler provides is irreplaceable for the Miami Heat, whereas what Giannis provides, even in a diminished role, is like is you know they they can survive. What happened yesterday? They're not that bad of a team without him, but also. Like you know, it's one of those. They're the Heat without him. Did you see how good they're eleven and eight without him? And you're telling me that Tyler Hero uh, is that important? They were bad at offense with Tyler Hero out there. They were bad at threes this year with Tyler Hero playing. Did you see how good Kevin Love looked when Giannis went out? I mean, that's the best game Kevin Love is that little playoff savvy right there. It was. Kevin Love was good before Giannis (laughs) went out. He drew two charges. Like that's what he's there to do. That's the best game in the Heat. King of the charges, man. Right place, right time because he's old he can't move cinder blocks for feet come on give me a break cinder blocks for feet i just told you they played matthews crowder and Ingles at the same Team time <laughs> That's what, kevin <laughs> love kevin love the night before the game dreamt that he's like he's <laughs> salivating please, please put them out there at the same time i'll feel like it's 2015 all over again <laughs> this is something stugatz that has plagued me the entire time that i have covered sports I tend to look at the macro instead of celebrating with jubilance the initial thing that sports fans want to celebrate today. Your team wins the way the Heat did at Milwaukee. Milwaukee's best player is injured. All of a sudden, you have a different hope than you had against Atlanta, a different hope than you had even late in the fourth quarter against Chicago. And I tend to be the guy that when Emilio Bonifacio goes four for five with an inside the park homer in his debut is the one urinating on it saying that's not what that guy is going to be. That's a temporary really transaction. Really ran out on the ledge with that one, Dan. Well, you guys disagreed <laughs> with me. You especially disagreed with me. You were wrong. He had me. a nice little career. He didn't he have did. much of a yes. career. Yeah, he, and he was, was a royal at one point. Yeah. That – you. Put it on the poll, Juju. Did Emilio Bonifacio have a nice little career? It was a career that was better than you expected. Let's be honest. No, 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 no he no. wasn't. A very he had the good, exact career you he thought wasn't he would a have. Very I good mean, baseball player. He was just fast. Bonifacio oh, expert on. over here. Yeah. I mean, geez. regardless, uh, here, I remember those are my bona fides. Bon- bona fides. Those are my Bonifacio bona fides, <laughs> and the audience has been mad about that for a long time. So how do I straddle? The fact that that was a very exciting game. The Heat won. They led from can start get to a, finish. Can we get a more recent example yeah. than Emilio Bonifacio? Wait, wait, are you are you saying the audience has been mad at you about the Bonifacio take for many many years now? Or uh, also, he played twelve years in the big twelve how's, years. How's I, that I, not, I, not, I, not a I nice know. little career? It's a great look career. At his numbers. Yeah. It doesn't matter what his numbers. Oh, twelve no, years no, in the big, no, man. Twelve years. You don't He's get to me again with the Bonifacio stuff. <laughs> the larger point is that I've done this every Dolphin season except last season for 20 years. Every time they win a game, I've told you they're not that good. And I end up not being wrong, but it doesn't buy me anything in the moment. I tend to be closer to where Tony is on this Heat team and where Mike are, but I don't want to dilute what it is they did yesterday. They beat a one seed on the road. I'm guessing that hasn't happened a whole lot. With eight seeds before, and now the one thing that gives you hope in the series, because if I'd be fine coming in here and saying after that game, they're going to lose in five, if Giannis was out there. But the thing that gives you hope is that I don't know the condition of Giannis, and him being hurt changes everything about who Milwaukee is. Enjoy the moments, man, because the Heat unexpectedly are up one to nothing in this series. I think what Dampen did a little bit for everyone is the injury later on to Tyler Hero. Like, that made, you know, Heat fans were feeling good about themselves, feeling good about their chances in this series, and then Hero gets hurt. But still, you're up one to nothing. 
on the Milwaukee Bucks. You beat them by 13 points on the road. Like, enjoy that for a minute, you know? We may not like this take either. Tyler, you don't have to dive for that ball. You don't have to dive for that, that ball. That's You're a superstar discussion. on this team. You're the 2B on this team. Don't dive for To Tony's point, the great uh, Oscar Schmidt said, there are piano players and there are piano carriers. I am a piano player. And that was a piano carrier move that... that Let Zeller do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Like, let's <laughs> be honest here, man. <laughs> it's one thing if it's a 50-50 ball. That was like an 80-20 ball. It it's playoff time, that man. Was, that was a look-at-me Louis time. Like, right? That was a look-at-me Louis play. Like, I'm trying out here. That's what that was. Did I, they win? Thank you, Billy. At what cost, Billy? The cost to the next the five right or six hand. weeks yeah. of his right hand and shooting, and if we're to buy what you say, possible botched surgery. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> not, I, I, I didn't wish surgeon. it on the man. Just saying. <laughs> Are you guys friends with Tyler What's Hero? Happening? Like, I don't understand. His poor I know. Hand what is going on five here? Weeks? Who cares? Jeremy is. Spoiled. Well, I mean, all you. Yeah, Jer- Jeremy shares. Yeah, he shares, like, show bits with him and stuff like that. Plays Nickelback for yeah. him. <laughs> the idea that we're sitting here breaking down whether or not Tyler Hero should have Doe for a ball. Should have played basketball. Before we're talking about Jimmy Butler continuing to be one of the greatest playoff performers, not only in Heat franchise history, but like ever, ever. He's been unbelievable. What are we doing? At the end of that Chicago game, he extended their season uh, largely by himself. Hero being out is about to make his job even harder because he's the only one who could shot create and Gabe Vincent and Kevin Love are not going to look like that a lot more going forward. But when you say, I mean, that him diving for the ball is a bad idea, I thought that was culture. I thought that was celebrated culture. We all dive, we all we all try our hardest, we all look like we're trying our hardest all the time. Dan, you ever read the book Animal Farm? Yes. Remember it was one of the commandments was all animals are created equal and then at some point they change it to all animals are created equal, but some animals are more equal than others. That's culture right there, is it's understanding. Yes, we dive for the ball. But in the hierarchy of people who dive for things, I am lower on that list. There are those who are higher on the list who should be it's doing the, the diving. playoffs. Okay, Pitbull. <laughs> I mean, but B- Billy, oh. is, Billy is right. We always celebrate. This is a classic second guess from you. It is uh, Monday morning lose, basketball. If they get swept, they have no guts. This team didn't want it. They didn't try hard enough. This was disgraceful. They need to tear the team apart. Then they try. They get hurt. And it's like, ah, why are we trying? Thank you, Billy. You're advocating for not trying your maximum. The right what, people need to try. I, I'm not. I'm just exactly the right people need you're to try. You're nine undrafted guys. Or you're seven undrafted Look, guys. Are here's the, ones the deal. Have to try. We're all. This is our playoffs. We're in a new studio. We're trying to do it big here. We're we're all excited, right? Imagine if Dan, to prove how excited he is for this opportunity, jumps back there, pushes Tasha out the way, and starts editing. Like, how awful would that be? And breaks his larynx. How, how far would he get? Do you think he'd be able to, like, <laughs> get onto the computer? Do you he think would he knows start. what the Adobe application looks like? You guys, uh, you guys should mock me for this because uh, what just happened, this is a true story. This just happened last week, okay? Right out here around the arena. A bunch of drones gathered in formation. A bunch of them did. Uh, They gathered in formation, a bunch of them, uh, to form a QR code. And it was basically an advertisement to send you to the Virgin uh, Cruise Lines, I believe, website. And an 11 year old was able to figure that out before (laughs) I was able to figure it out, at least in part because the formation scared me. You think I'm kidding. You thought we were under attack? You you think I'm kidding. Just in general, that happening. I mean, Mike sent me over the weekend some AI creation of what was that? A Drake song merged with uh, The Weeknd, and it sounded plausibly like they were working together? So I don't know if you guys have heard this by the artist Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. And if you see Ghost Rider's socials, it's basically just a ghost, like traditional, with a, a sheet over its head. But it released a song, and it's on all major streaming platforms. And the rumor is that all these labels are trying to take so, down this song yep. because it's a it poses itself as a Metro Boomin produced track with Drake and The Weeknd. It sounds just like it, and it's really catchy. It's a bop, as the kids would say. It's a two minute bop. I don't think they say that anymore. No, they say it's a bop. Nobody says that anymore. They, they say it's a bop. That. That's out. They say it's a bop. Put it on the poll, Juju. Do kids say it's a bop? It's a really good song, and 
it's purported to be 100% artificial intelligence. Not a Metro uh, Boomin' track, not a Drake song, uh, not The Weeknd on vocals. Now, I, I do think that this is a time for skeptical Billy. I have reached out to people in the industry, and one person thinks it's a marketing ploy. Yeah. The other person thinks it's legit because it's mixed like... And, <laughs> but the other producer says, actually, the mixing is what's in line with overblown hip-hop right now. All, it's all kind of mixed like... So, I don't know if you guys have heard this track. Like I said, it's a bop. It's... We're at the precipice of music changing forever. See, Mike, you're concerned about music. I'm concerned about the artificial intelligence when they do the deep fakes of the president saying, and by the way, uh, I hate everyone who likes the color yellow. Like, and Yeah, and then nuclear war starts. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's just one of those things where... Yeah, I saw a deep fake of Joe Biden announcing nuclear war with, with Russia, and it looked pretty convincing yeah it's got a little hiccups here and there but it's like i keep thinking this is it's like only the, gonna get better the early days of this they'll, they'll figure out those those smooth all that those kinks and then what are we gonna do do you guys not understand Die. when i say all these drones uh forming together to form a qr code scared me because we're not very far from all of them being able to shoot lasers right into my eyes that kill me <laughs> dan's living in spider-man far from home the book the part but where the multiverse. If you can send me to a website I didn't mean to go to just because you're manipulating my curiosity with what your drones are doing, how far are you from being able to smolder my head? Dan. How how far are you from being able to smite me with these drones? Spoiler alert, Dan, they can already do that. That's what they do in a lot of uh, military excursions now. Dan, on the QR code, did you like just hold your phone up and open the the camera app to get the? I the got website, scared or did you take a mostly. Of I it? started to do it, and then the eleven-year-old did it faster than I did, and came upon the the, the 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 treasure chest was opened, and I didn't need to do it anymore. You seem to get scared a lot. Man. Do you I still? Really do. Do you Have still, you seen what's happening in the world? <laughs> do you still screen cap your camera to take a photo? <laughs> You should have seen me. What's so the, funny you, about that? You should have seen me the early days of the QR code with these menus and stuff. How much a I lot of pictures with. of menus on your phone. Do you guys know? Do you guys know what QR stand, stands for? Does everyone in the room? Quentin Richardson. <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> he had no idea, ladies and gentlemen. That wasn't fed to him. He just. On the spot. <laughs> and then he accidentally turned the flashlight yeah, on his yeah. phone right now. How do you turn it <laughs> off? <laughs> Dan, turn it off for me. <laughs> I will. Do you guys know what QR code means? What it stands for? Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Levitard Show. Do you know what QR code means? No. Quick response? I huh? think so. Oh, is it? I think that's what it is. Ah! Uh, he did that, that, uh, that slower somehow than <laughs> Quentin Richardson. You're going to have a hard time. I lights did back, a QR. The lights back on. <laughs> I don't think, I think we could spend the rest of the segment with him. Tr you don't know how to, well, you know how to turn that off, right? It's already on the flashlight. What do you do? <laughs> At the oh, right look there. at you. <laughs> Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, Dan. Hey, hey, hey. Way to go. <laughs> you guys aren't scared. Put it on the poll, Juju. Are you scared about what the drones are doing? I'm scared that there's no gas. I don't care about Yeah, the what the hell happened here last week? I came Flooding. back to Miami and there's floods, biblical yeah. floods everywhere, and like there's no gas at the gas station. Floods are in, abortions are out. Guns are in as well. And again, abortions are out. How do you guys know that this isn't a fake thing by Drake? Because this feels oh. very much like f Drake's fake bets that he does all the time. And like, oh, he actually partnered with a gambling company. Well, like, I mean, the weekend doesn't sound quite there, but I I've heard. There is like a website that that is just an AI Drake, and you can tell something's not right there. This is the best AI version of Drake that I've heard on these things, but I don't really understand the full capacity of this technology right now. I, I've heard Biggie and Tupac rapping on in Paris, and it sounds great. I this is a really interesting time for music, and I know that the writer strike is also. I'd love to talk to Mike Sure about this mm -hmm. because I think they're trying to fully accredit chat GPT as a writer. And I'm wondering exactly how far this goes and how many people are going to be put out of work by this. How about we cure cancer? Yeah, good how idea. How about that? Like, yeah. how about enough with yeah. all this no. fake shit? Let's no. cure can, diseases. If you, if you advance artificial intelligence enough to surpass human intelligence, can't chat GPT conceivably cure cancer? Or run for president. Wow. I'd like to see the day. No, really, I would. 
I don't care how we get there. Let's cure cancer, everyone. I don't know. I, I care how we get there. I also care how we get there. We you can, know what? Fair point. We can all we can have cancer cured. Dan pro cancer, and then live the rest of our lives as slaves, physical yeah. slaves, but and no cannot, cancer, and cannot no die cancer. from cancer because the AI, the drones are running well, our lives. If the drones and AI runs our lives, and then we have a cure for cancer, then we no longer have to work to have health care to pay for our cancer treatment. So. I think we're good then, right? But what about the part about being slaves? Slaves to technology? I could never be. <laughs> Before we get to Billy's Twitter contention, Twitter poll that Sandy should go to the minor leagues, reigning Cy Young winner Sandy <laughs> should go to the minor leagues to work out the kinks. Billy, don't deny it now. I we'll just asked the question. Yes, you were just I asking people to I left it up to the to people, think. yes yeah. or no. I didn't say that he should or should not. I said should Sandy go back to back bad starts, Dan, but we're not getting to that. Before now. we get to that, and uh, that Robbie Anderson has chosen Anderson now and is a Miami Dolphin, and the Dolphins reportedly want Dalvin Cook. I wanted to circle back around to what Mike Ryan was saying about uh, the kids wanting to refer to whatever this AI is that the weekend and Drake put out as Bop. A good song is a bop. They don't don't anymore. No, I still see tweets that say it's a bop. Four years ago, yeah. No, no, there's still tweets that say it's a bop. Because you see it on Twitter. And Dan just said bop. Tony and Mike, uh, Tony and Billy had a lot of opinions about young people and music and Coachella. And I have not been keeping track of Coachella. Tony says, Why would you? Bad Bunny (laughs) dominated it. And Billy says, I'm not welcome to. Coachella, that there are already you plenty personally? of old people at Coachella <laughs> who need to get out of Coachella because it needs to be a thing for young people. I just, it's again, Dan, that's not fair. I just asked the question should there be an age limit for things like Coachella? What would your age limit be? Leonardo DiCaprio should not be at Coachella. How old is Leo? Wait, how else is he going to find a new girlfriend? 50? He's got to be 50, right? Dan, the storyline is not Leo, it's not age limits. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. Excellent. It's Bad Bunny dominating. It's La Musica Latina dominating. That's that's the most important part of this coach. Why are you saying old oh boy back there? Like, who are you, are, Jeremy? Like, what's wrong with you? Whoa! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Latin, at each other Latin today. music Weird. has just surpassed a billion dollars in revenue. Think about that, Billy. $1.1 billion in revenue for what Latin music. What does that music. mean? This year, they've made $1.1 billion in revenue in the Latin music scene. How, do you want me to explain it to you again? <laughs> it's just very vague. Latin music has made a billion that, dollars in what? In money. money. No, I, <laughs> like, like, what are we talking about here? I mean, that Coachella's been really good about introducing those those different types of music to the mainstream. I, I know that they had um, uh, a Punjabi artist play for the first time. I, I've discovered. Uh, the Who, not uh, oh. not the actual Who with spinning guitars. There's another but who? There's, Yeah, there's a metal band out of out of Asia that that I discovered there, and they put Bad Bunny and J Balvin, I think, on the map in the mainstream, even though they were already headed there uh, a couple a couple of years ago. Coachella's a, a taste making festival, and it it is for the masses, and I and I like that. I, I think. The thing that I came away with most impressed by with Coachella, because I watch a lot of the the live stream, and there's a whole big scandal and controversy surrounding one of their headliners <laughs> in, in Frank Ocean that I'd like to get to. But I think as music becomes harder to differentiate, as production kind of all just goes for what can pop on a TikTok. I was riding around in Savannah, Georgia, and I heard this Miguel song. I was 12 years old. And I heard it come up on the radio three separate times. I'm like, this can't be a coincidence. Why is Sure a Thing all of a sudden mm-hmm. playing now? Mm-hmm. And I found out it blew up on TikTok. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a song that was released 12 years ago. Great song, but now it's having its moment. I was actually really interested in this band called Knock Loose. And I think metalcore and metal music is actually going to come up because as you have AI-generated music, as you have all these these acts that are essentially made for TikTok, I think people are going to crave some authenticity with their music. You think it's AI proof? I, I, I would love to hear how AI replicates the feeling that you get thrashing at a metal show. People screaming? You think AI can't do screamo? <laughs> Whatever that Tony, music is? Tony was making faces at Yeah, because your... he says metal core is on the way up. No, Bobby, Hispanic music's on the way no, up. No, no, no. Forget they're not metal, on the way up. They're metal here. Core, whatever the hell it is. No, no. They're they're on the way here. Look, you, know, you don't have to be dismissive just because you don't yeah. like it. Like it's, yeah, he does. I like 
all the I'm I'm very eclectic. I was watching Becky G and I, I watched the Bad Bunny and I saw the terrible uh portion where Post Malone came and ruined everything. I What's I do that think like? that I find myself gravitating to towards these high energy rock shows as I've gotten older and I've always been into rock, but I've liked all the other stuff and I think that the uh I think now where music is headed that kind of experience is going to have a premium attached to it. And I think you're going to see bands like Turnstile and, and Knock Loose really start blowing up a little bit. I saw Turnstile got announced for Rolling Loud. That's going to be a moment in time. But Mike, aren't you really just articulating live live music, right? No, like, that, no, no. Why no? Because look look what Frank Ocean did yesterday. Okay, but live but, music okay. has basically become listening parties. So, so two, two weeks ago, I went, or three weeks ago now, I went to Dreamville Fest. And I'm telling you, Seeing Waka Flocka live, that's oh, there's that nothing. It's energy, crazy. but Waka Flocka serves as a hype man for his own music. There, there's a different there's a different energy that goes with metal shows than there is for other shows. It's it's just true. In pop music, a lot of it's just so they do live tuning now. They 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 have all these overproduced aspects to it that you can't really differentiate what's the singer's voice and what's production. I mean, Frank Ocean, know, for man. most of Frank Ocean's headlining set at Coachella, he just no. put in an aux cord and did a listening no, party no, to his no. own music. What? I've been to a lot of shows, almost as many shows as you've been to basketball games. Okay. And I, I know the difference in energies. I'm just saying, so this is, this is a first-hand account. He was one and a half hours late. He would have really long, weird, and silent pauses throughout his set, like two minutes of pure silence. He kept bringing on people but not even participating in the song, just letting them sing or DJ. There was also a six-minute rave in the middle of his concert. His whole stage setup was made so the audience could not see him. No matter how close we were, we couldn't see the stage, so everyone had to watch the screen the whole time. The screen itself would rarely even show him, too. You'll see in the videos posted later from this person's account. Conclusion, people travel, blah, 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 right? So, like, that, that's not a right... That's just the tip of the iceberg. But, but you think that's tip, That's that's typical? No, I'm not arguing that that's typical. But you're using it as an example. No, I'm like, saying... Like, oh, that would never happen in a rock no, show. No, I'm it saying... It happen at most shows. No, I'm saying what's typical of metalcore shows and, and, and metal music is that that energy, that authenticity is different than pop music, hip-hop music, and all that stuff. So, it, it's... And even most rock music... At this point, most rock music on that card also seems very processed. Uh, I'm just saying like metal, I think, is going to have a moment. I think people are going to veer towards the authenticity. And I say that as a fan of all types of music. And by the way, your Frank Ocean tidbits, tip, uh, tip of the iceberg. He had an entire ice rink assembled. That was going to be the performance. He was going to come out in the middle of an ice rink and he had ice skaters. They all rehearsed. And the day of the show, he said, no, I'm not doing any of that. And they had to disassemble, thaw out the ice and they had to disassemble everything. And at the last second, he said, no, I'm not going to do the live stream. And Coachella had to pull the plug on the live stream. Uh, it might okay. get litigious before weekend two. So he was a little late. He had some awkward pauses. <laughs> he screwed up the live stream. Ooh. Are we sure it wasn't just his first day at a new studio? <laughs> or Are Love you, is Blind. Uh, damn. What, <laughs> what is going yes. on with Love is Blind? You don't want to know. Like in the show or about the live stream? All of it. In the show, it's a long story, Dan. <laughs> long story. Okay. That's it. Thank you, guys. Love to hear some of it. What are you guys talking about? There's 18 different storylines. It's hard to explain. We're also all of it. like in the dangerous like spoiling period. You know what I mean? Like It's only Good been point. like a month or two since it's been out, and then they release a couple episodes at a time. So like sometimes people wait till every episode is out before you watch the entire thing, and apparently last night they were supposed to do a live stream, and it was going to be a live reunion, and it did not go well from what the internet is telling everybody. And people were just kind of waiting around forever and ever for it to start. And then they were just like, you know what? We're just going to record this, and you guys can catch it whenever we put it out. Hopefully you guys are not mad about this. Bye. Can you guys help me understand how TikTok is changing the way that all music is becoming popular and the ways that the industry was not in any way prepared for this move from the way that we used to make songs popular versus young people getting to decide what's popular for everybody. I, would, I, would. I got you on this. I'll let Mike explain, <laughs> though. I, mean, yeah. I think we should have JT Daly on and maybe uh, Nick Sylvester, uh, Mina's husband, because I was talking to them throughout the weekend about where music is headed, where music is right now. Are you now. sure it was actually the weekend, though? I was talking to them. 
about all of this stuff. And Nick actually, Nick was the one that told me that he actually thinks that that Drake track is just a marketing ploy. Where JT, who's been, doing a, who's been doing a lot of work in pop music, thinks that this is where everything is, is headed right now. And these are producers that I had a fascinating conversation with JT when we were doing the musical about how record labels just are looking for the 20 seconds that can get on the algorithm. And you, oftentimes you just have the 20 seconds and you build a song thereafter. And TikTok has hugely influenced the music industry in ways that people that aren't users probably don't really understand. But look at the charts and see uh, all these songs that are charting and look at the release dates behind them. It's cool when they do it. I'm a fool when I do it. Like that one, that's the perfect TikTok song, right? Where everyone knows that one clip and then that's it. But it's an actual full song. Uh, J. Cole, No Role Models, came out, what is that, nine years ago now? And it's still on the charts because people keep using it on these TikTok videos, so... Well, and the artist who really took advantage of this, like, first and foremost was Lil Nas X with Old Town Road, where yep. he had specific parts of it that were utilized on TikTok, and you're essentially making songs that are sort of incomplete. You're making them two minutes and eight seconds, and you're not putting that last chorus that we've all trained our brains to hear. So you're also then cycling people into just streaming the song again once they've already downloaded it. So you get a great 20 seconds that can go on TikTok, and then a really short song, so when people are listening on Apple or Spotify, like they're having to listen to it over and over again. It's, it's, it's the way to take advantage of how the industry works now. Stugatz, I know that you find Robbie Anderson hugely frustrating because the Ooh. Jets were counting on him to be a number one receiver. Mm -hmm. And he has been asked with the Jets and with Sam Darnold in Carolina to be a number one receiver. He is not going to be that with the Dolphins. He's not going to have to be that with the Dolphins. And he's coming over. And I don't think since Mark Duper we have had a Miami Dolphin who has legally changed, changed his name to something ridiculous. Right. Chosen Anderson. Oh, Chosen, Chosen Anderson. Anderson is now Robbie, absurd, like, yeah. the third receiver. I think he Miami might Dolphins. be the fourth Dolphins wide receiver. Braxton Berrios might be number three. Well, and if they're going after Dalvin Cook as well, they are really trying to overwhelm people with offense. Like, <laughs> I don't know how real that is. I've heard Dalvin Cook for two months now, but if you're – Right now, they're spending $7 million total on four running backs. I'm guessing that Dalvin Cook, all of a sudden, if that's the guy replaces you want. Replaces all four? Yeah, obviously, yes. but also replaces all four. And how the hell are you going to be able to slow that offense? Oh, I know. No offensive lineman. Uh -huh. <laughs>